Well, greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Glad to be with you today. This is February the 21st, 2019, and I'm reading from 1 Timothy chapter 1 and in verse 10. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 10. Now, this is just a short commentary on something that I had actually preached in 2018, as I was going through the book of Colossians in a verse-by-verse setting, uh, I preached a message from Colossians chapter 2, verse 22, to chapter 4, verse 1, on the subject of servants and masters, or we could say uh, slavery. And so the title of my message today is Men Stealers. And I kind of wanted to follow up on last year. And I have just finished an article on men stealers that we will have available on our website probably within the next three or four weeks. And I want you to notice that as we come to 1 Timothy chapter 1, and I'm reading verse 10, we find here from God's holy word, For whoremongers, for them that defy themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for per- perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Now, I'm going to look at the surrounding verses in just a moment, but please notice that as we look at verse 10, we have the word men stealers in this passage. Heavenly Father, we do ask thy blessings upon the reading of thy word and the subject that we're considering here today. For it's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Again, we're titling this short commentary, Men Stealers, or again, we're looking at the subject of slavery. Now, I want you to think about this. We find that in verse 8, he said, For we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Verse 9, Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for the sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers for of fathers and murders of mothers, for manslayers. He continues in verse 10. He mentions whoremongers. He mentions those that defile themselves with mankind. And he mentions men stealers. Of course, he mentions liars and other things in this passage. But we're focusing in on today on the subject of men stealers. And again, this is just a short commentary on this subject. We did preach a message last year. Uh, Again, we titled it Servants and Masters and, of course, uh, Slavery. That's one of the thoughts that we Uh, brought forth in that particular message. Now, please notice with me, in verse 10, actually verse 9 and 10, please notice that we have a list of those who will not inherit the kingdom of God. In other words, he mentions the lawless, the disobedient, the ungodly, the sinners, murderers, whoremongers, sodomites, liars. We have a list here of those whom the law speaks to, and we have a list here of those who will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, I want you to think about this. Men stealers is in this list. Now, think about this. He speaks of an, of an evil that is in society. And he speaks of those who will not inherit the kingdom of God. We have here a list of those for whom the law is intended for. And we have the word men stealers. Last year, as I was teaching through the book of Colossians, we got into chapter 3, verse 22, through chapter 4, verse 1, and looking at the subject of slavery, servants and masters, 
this word in First Timothy one ten, men stealers, kind of jumped out at me like it has never before. Now, what does men stealers mean? Well, there's many synonyms. It has to do with kidnappers. It includes slave traders. It means to enslave. This is the worst of all thieves. It has the ideal of slave traders. One who steals another for the purpose of making him a slave. Stealing someone to sell into bondage. As in Genesis 37 verse 27 with Joseph and his brothers. Or Genesis chapter 40 and verse 15 and Revelation 18 verse 13. Now here's what we find in the scripture, in the Old Testament. We find that in Exodus 21:16 and Deuteronomy 24 verse 7 that men stealing was a crime punishable by death. And this is the reason I want to come back and address this again here this year. And this is the reason that I have just finished an article on this subject titled, Men Stealers, Subtitled Slavery. Because this is a evil in the world. Now, we find in the New Testament several times where God addresses masters and servants. For instance, in Colossians 3, as I just mentioned, beginning in verse 22 into chapter 4, verse 1, we find it again in Ephesians 6, verses 5 through 9. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 1 through 4, Titus 2, verses 9 and 10, 1 Peter 2, verses 18 through 21, 1 Corinthians 7, verse 18 through 24. Of course, here in 1 Timothy 1, 10, we find the word men-stealer. Philemon, verses 10 through 21, and, of course, Revelation 18, verse 13. So, as the apostles are writing in the first century, and when we think of Christianity and the beginning of Christianity the apostles are writing to slaves and masters that are in the church. He instructs them both as he did the family, as in Colossians chapter 2, verses 18 through 21, he's instructing the family, and then beginning in verse 22 into chapter 4, verse 1, he's instructing masters and servants. They they actually, as, as people were being saved and added to the uh, uh, churches in the first century, uh, they become members of the same church, masters and slaves. They become members of the same church. A slave might even be a master's elder, that is a bishop or a deacon. That was a, a huge possibility because many slaves had been converted and masters were converted in the first century. We find Onesimus um that was a slave in the church. He was a faithful brother. But you know the Bible teaches in Colossians 3.10-11 and Galatians 3.28 that there's neither bond or free in Christ Jesus. In other words, there's equality in Christ and there is to be equality in the church of Jesus Christ. In other words, Christianity shows a new order of things. The Bible clearly says there is one blood. In Acts 17.26, that is one race. That is the human race. And so, racial slavery is an evil in society. It is an evil in the world. And it is contrary to the teachings of the New Testament. Now, the church may not be able 
in the first century to change the Roman Empire, but true reformation through the gospel changes the hearts and lives and actions of believers. Like I say, the church that had its beginnings at Pentecost in the first century, about A.D. 33, may not have been able to change the laws and the Roman Empire, but it sure could change the hearts and lives of those who were converted and that came in to the church of Jesus Christ. The Bible, the Lord Jesus, teaches what we refer to as the golden rule in Matthew 7 and verse 12, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Or we might could say, don't do unto others what you don't want done to you. The question that we ask to anyone who thinks that slavery is okay today, would you like to be a slave? Again, Galatians 3.28, the principle of the gospel in redemption and freedom should eventually lead to emancipation. So Christianity in the first century or at any time never formed a revolt or revolution against slavery, but nations who became truly Christian, they abolished slavery. Christians in early America may not have been able to change the laws of the land, but they should have never owned slaves. Now, I want to come back to our text here, and I want you to notice the severity, the importance of this subject. Because, again, I remind you in verse 9 and 10 of 1 Timothy chapter 1, we have here a list of those for whom the law is intended for, those who are living in sin those who are in violation of the law. The law is intended for them. And we find here in verse 9 and 10, we find that men-stealers, let that word penetrate your mind and heart. Men-stealers are in a list of those who will not inherit the kingdom of God. Men-stealers is listed here with the lawless, with the disobedient, with the ungodly, with the sinners, with murderers, with whoremongers, with sodomites, with liars, and others. Many times, God says in his word, there there are those who shall not inherit the kingdom of God. We find this in 1 Corinthians 6, Galatians 5, Ephesians 5, Colossians 3, Revelation chapter 21, and other places. And men-stealers is in that list. What is a men-stealer? Someone who is a kidnapper is a slave trader to enslave someone. Again, this is the worst of all thieves. It's slave traders, slave dealers, one who steals another for the purpose of making him a slave. To steal someone, to put them in bondage, or to steal someone to sell into bondage. Now there's some things to think about here. Slavery has existed over the centuries. There's various reasons for slavery. There was slavery in the first century as the New Testament letters were being written. We Again, I mentioned the verses where the, the apostles began dealing with this. There's various reasons for slavery. Sin human nature, war. Many are taken captive during war, put under bondage. 
there's racial racial slavery, and then of course poverty has caused many to go into slavery, and God allowed Israel to even to go into slavery to Babylon and to Rome because of their sins and rebellion against Him. In the Roman Empire, in the city of Rome, in the first century, it's estimated that one-third of the population were slaves. This is in the first century. that It's estimated that one-third of the population were slaves. And slavery in the Roman Empire was quite brutal and cruel. And some slaves, of course, could buy their freedom. We also find Hebrew slavery in the Old Testament. Now, Slavery existed. It's existed throughout the centuries. And God in the scripture regulated it and forbid the abuses of it. There was fairness and compassion. You see, Israel was a theocracy with the Mosaic law code. It had physical boundaries, had kings as well as priest and and there's things there in the Old Testament that are not binding on the church of Jesus Christ. There was also a system of indentured servanthood for debt payment um, a th- or a thief to pay back what he has stolen. In general, the servanthood was temporal. I dealt with this last year in my sermon on servants and masters. There were different types of slavery that are mentioned in the Old Testament. Uh, There are those who, especially the Jews that borrowed money and could not pay it back, he would become a servant to the lender. Uh, But he was set free at the end of six years. And he, th- this helped him to get back on his feet. Uh, in Exodus 22, there, those that were sold into slavery due to criminal behavior. And, uh, and then you had the Jubilee release in Leviticus chapter 25, verse 25 through 28. In other words, if one lost their land to another because of poverty, the land reverted back to the original owner in a 50-year cycle called the Jubilee. In other words, uh, he's to uh, pay uh, as a hired servant. He's to be paid, I should say, as a hired servant. And there was other types of slavery back there, but there was always that time of release, unless somebody wanted to be a slave. So, in the Old Testament, there was slavery. It did exist. It existed in the world and among the nations, but God dealt with it, regulated it, and forbid its abuse. Ancient Israel was a theocracy. And, of course, we do see the system of indentured servanthood for debt payment and so forth. But as we come into the New Testament, even though there was slavery in the Roman Empire, even though it existed throughout history, we find that as we look into Christianity, we look into the gospel of Jesus Christ that freed men's soul from the slavery of sin, also ultimately freed men as well from physical slavery. Now, when we think about America and the slavery that existed in America, I can think of no other word than what the Bible says here in 1 Timothy 1.10 is men-stealers. You think about this country and the sin of slavery. The Civil War was probably God's judgment upon this nation. 
on the north and the south, and especially the south. Now, was this war fought over states' rights or slavery? This is debated by many, and this debate has went on for years, and it will go on for years. In my opinion, both sides were wrong. Why did it take over half a million people to die to end slavery? And don't think that slavery did not play a part in it. Yes, there was the issue of states' rights. But slavery did play a part in that war. All we've got to do is go and look at the speech, March the 21st, 1861, of the Confederate States of America's Vice President, Alexander Stevens. We look at his speech and we see clearly that slavery was an issue. We can read some of Robert Dabney, a Southern minister, uh, in his book, Defense of Virginia and the South, and see clearly, yes, slavery did play a part in that. Now, here's my point in all of this, and I want to keep this short. Again, we have an entire sermon on this. How should we approach this, and how should we consider this? Men stealers. Think about this. Slavery in America for many, many years. Blacks were kidnapped and sold into slavery. They were used for labor in the New World. Slave trade existed in the North and the South. It was a sin. I've heard people say, well, in Africa, they sold their own people into slavery. That doesn't matter what they did in Africa. What matters is, is in America and Christians. Christians should have never participated in this sin. We find that the blacks were kidnapped and sold into slavery even if they were sold into slavery by their own people, that does not change the fact that I, as a Christian, must look through uh, the spectacles of Scripture to see what God has to say about this. And so these that were kidnapped and brought to America, they were used for labor in the New World. Slavery did exist in the North and South. And it was wrong. Why? Because of this one word that we have here in verse 10, men stealers. Now let me come back to this before that I close. And I want you to keep in mind that any form especially racial slavery, is a sin and a violation of God's Word. Again, in the book of Acts, in chapter 17, we find very clearly, as the Apostle Paul stood on Mars Hill, that he spoke of the fact that God hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth. There is one blood, there is one race, and that is the human race. And that human race is divided into two divisions, those that are saved and those that are lost. This is how God sees humanity. He doesn't see the color of the skin or the slant of the eye. We find that Racial slavery is a sin, and this whole thing that we see in our country today, dividing the blacks, the whites, the Hispanic, this division, it did not originate in the church of Jesus Christ. It originated out of the depths of hell. It is satanic, and it is wrong for any color to think they're superior over someone else 
based upon their the color of their skin. So let me l- come back to our text one more time. He says here, just reading the first part of verse 10, he said, For whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, and for men stealers. Men stealers, again, is listed with those who shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That is the lawless, the disobedient, the ungodly, the sinners, the murderers, the whoremongers, the sodomites, the liars, and on and on this list can go. So let us put aside any racial issues and let us realize that true Christians, true Christianity does not condone racial slavery racial issues in any way. The gospel of Jesus Christ makes us free. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. We find the Lord Jesus Christ in John 8. He said, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The Lord Jesus in Luke chapter 4, He came, and the Bible says in Luke 4.18, He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. There is liberty in Jesus Christ. There is freedom in the gospel, Romans 1, and in verse 16, clearly tells us, and the Apostle Paul in the previous verse said he's a debtor both to the Greek and to the barbarians, to the wise and the unwise, but in verse 16, he said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believe it, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Salvation is in Jesus Christ, And in Jesus Christ, according to Galatians chapter 3, in Galatians chapter 3, verse 28, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you're all one in Christ Jesus. And verse 29, and if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. We have a sermon also titled, uh, One Blood, we have an article titled One Blood out of Acts chapter 17 and let me leave with you that salvation is in Christ and our salvation is through his blood that he shed at Calvary's cross. He died for our sins that we might have eternal life. Jesus Christ paid the price and salvation is in Christ. And those who live their lives dealing with racial tension and and this racial pride in our hearts, maybe you need to be saved. If you believe that one color of skin is superior to another, maybe you need to be saved. Maybe you need to repent of your sins and come to saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Men stealers shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Let me leave with you also that my heroes in this country, my heroes are not union or confederate leaders, as in the Civil War or any other war, but my heroes are the Lord Jesus Christ and his apostles. And they gave me the truth of the Scripture and how I might be saved and how that I might live my life and how that I might love all men and pray for them that they come in to the kingdom of God. Well, I want to thank you for listening to this short commentary. Again, please listen to our sermon, One Blood and Reader Article, and listen to our sermon, Servants and Masters and Slavery. And we will soon have an article available available rather on our website. Thank you and God bless you. Good day.